up. Look. Oh, oh, snap. Check out the countdown. Oh, snap. That means ropes is going down. Let's get it. October is looking pretty damn jazzy. Let's say it again like we mean it. Jazzy. She's going all alpha in October for her appearance in New Japan Pro Wrestling. She just wants to fight Jazzy. The alpha female Gabbard comes to the ropes to talk it up with your boy, Ty Asbury. Let's get Jazzy on off the top rope. The Ropes Media. The Ropes Media. Uh. Tyron Asbury. Yeah. Tyron Asbury. Yeah. yeah. Every chance you get to hear us, you clip us. Just the time on the radio. Uh. My opinions, my opinions. Every time you hear me down, moving now. Later on the stereo. What's up, everybody? All the top rope makes the huge return. I'm your boy, Ty Asbury, and when the sizzle's coming back, you know it's going to be damn good. I want to thank everybody for joining me on this special episode on this Thursday morning. Now, I want to say this. I admire hard work in wrestling. You got somebody who's a promoter, a wrestler, likes to beat people up. She's my kind of lady. Coming all the way from Germany, my live guest, of course, Jazzy Gabbard is in the house. Jazzy, how you doing, girl? Hi, what's up? I'm doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> Jazzy, my dear, I'm doing very good. And I, I want to thank you very much for wanting to come on the show because I've read all about you. You're a promoter. You got some shows coming up next month. I want to ask you first and foremost, do you get any sleep? How, 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 how do you do it? I have no idea, man. I'm so stressed. And then I had to say yes to you because, you know, you're asking me since forever. And I felt really guilty. I'm like, man, I need to go on his show, but I have no time, dude. Like, not even to get myself makeup on. And I'm like, just running and running. Yeah, it's it's crazy at the moment. Well, you know, you don't, you don't need, like I said, you look, you know, beautiful. So you don't have to worry about makeup. <laughs> and you don't need makeup to come on off the top rope because off the top rope, you're a family. And when you're family on the show, we just talk it up. And like when when you like you said it best, Jazz, you being super busy, like is it a good busy or a busy for you? Like, I need a rest. It's too damn busy. No, no, it's a good busy. Um, but just go back. And like when I go on an interview, like yours, for example, I always want to give my best. That's why they also call me the alpha female because I'm professional. I always give my best and I want to give my best to you. So today, like, you know, usually I have like a really great setting and all that stuff. But yeah, it was not possible. So my standard is so high, you know, for myself. Uh, and I think that's why I'm maybe successful. I don't know. We will see. Um, but yeah, like I had yesterday um, on my Instagram, I had like a little interview for myself. Like I went live and I said, yeah, this didn't work out. This didn't work. Out. And my friends called me up. They said, Jesse, what are you doing? You should be so proud about yourself. You did this and this. I'm like, yeah, but it's not perfect. For us, it is perfect. So as you just say, you know, it's it's good as you are, but I have like, I stress myself, I think. But it's good stress. It's good stress. It's exciting. Sometimes, you know, problems come around, like sponsors dropping out or a wrestler is getting sick and then you need to, you know, be quick. And yeah, this is the, the, the stressful thing, but all all under control till now. Girlfriend, you are jazzy. That's why I think that's why they call you jazzy. You are doing so many jazzy things in wrestling, and that's why you're here on Off the Top Roof. And like, I'm on the whole busy thing now. Is there can rest can being wrestling busy can, can that be a good thing? Because like I said, being a promoter, I can't even think top of my head how crazy you must be being a promoter. Because I know you're getting ready for next month, and can. How crazy can wrestling busy be? Well, I don't know what you mean, but I guess wrestling busy. Like if like a promoter and a wrestler, it's two totally different things. Yeah. And I am both at the moment. You know, like I accepted some matches uh, on October 1st. I'm going yeah. to launch when New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, my God. Like I couldn't turn that down. Like some other promoters asked me, hey, can you come? And I'm like, ah, oh, no. 
because I don't like the traveling anymore. You know, it's like after the pandemic, you were just sitting at home and now just thinking about to travel 10 hours to this place or that Whoa. place. It gives me nightmares. But this is uh, this is like busy. Like I remember when I had like three shows at a weekend. So maybe on Friday I'm in Paris. I have to be in London on a Saturday and then back in Germany on a Sunday to do a show. That's like wrestling busy. That's like a different kind of busy, but promoter busy. It's just, yeah, my phone rings constantly. And I don't like that, to be honest, because sometimes I think, why do you have to call me for that? Like, don't you know yourself? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, think. <laughs> yeah. It's probably like the simplest little question. And like you said, Jazz, you're like, why are you asking me? Like, you can look on your phone or, you know, that's why your phone is like your encyclopedia anymore. But yeah, it's, it's like, Jazzy, I know what you mean, because you want your self time to you reading a book, a movie, I mean, working out. Mm. I, I see, I see what you mean. Like people like, I love you, but leave me alone. <laughs> no, the thing is like at the moment, like I have two little dogs. I have like these tiny little yeah. dogs. I love them. Yeah. They're my, they're my everything. And they, you know, they have to cut short at the moment. Like now I'm out and I was all day out. So I had to bring these dogs to my friend and I know they're, taking good care but mommy is mommy you know like they love me so yeah i'm a little bit you know feel bad about it but after october they will be fine and then i will cuddle them a lot <laughs> well jazzy i want to say you talked about the pandemic a couple minutes ago and i, I had to delay the show for a couple uh weeks i had i had covid so mm. it makes me feel better my first guest back on the show is to have you on so thank you for making me feel better that you've been you know my first guest back went off the top <laughs> road because COVID, it kicks your ass. I, I can mm -hmm. legit say it, it is definitely no joke. But I want to ask you, Jazzy, first and foremost, I mean, you're, you're well-known all over the world. You, you've done it all in wrestling. But for fans who don't know about you, like, what, what are they missing out on? Like, what, what, what are they going to learn about you on the show today? Oh, my God. That's a tough question. Why do you do that to me? I don't know. Like, what can you learn from me? Uh, I don't know. I'm here for entertainment. I, I love to entertain the people. That's why I'm doing shows. And, you know, in the ring, I'm a totally different character. I mean, you saw um, the start of your show. I look yeah. so mean. Sometimes I look at these videos. I'm like, who is this girl? Hey, why is she so angry? <laughs> uh, but in normal life, you know, I'm, I'm not that you know so i don't know what can they people learn from me i don't know <laughs> i'll say this people you will learn that jazzy is one of the best definitely check her out and that <laughs> promo i showed of you in the show that's jazzy that's the same you that is you and like you're, you're still the same person i mean it, it it's don't don't beat yourself up you are you like i said that when i saw that clip though I was mm. like, man, I was like, who, who pissed her off? <laughs> <laughs> same, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is so weird. Since two years, I didn't do it anymore, you know, and I have to do it this weekend. It's a surprise where I'm ending up. It's not a big show, don't worry. Um, but it's going to be a surprise. And I have to be all mean again. So I don't know even if I can do it. So <laughs> I will think about something. <laughs> yeah. Now, I made a clip. I do something here on all the top rope. I call it Twitter take. And I, mm -hmm. I want to show this for the fans because this is a ropes memories for you over the years, because I want, this is on your Twitter. I want to show this because mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. I just want to roll this and just, I want, I want to ask you this question. Okay. Now that, that clip was you over the years doing like MMA, mm -hmm. wrestling, WWE, and everything. Like, mm -hmm. what's one word to describe your accomplishments in wrestling? If you had to think of like one word, because they're they're fantastic, and you know, it's awesome. Thank you. Ah oh, man, one word is not enough. Like, yeah, I want to have two, you can throw words. two or three or four. Yeah, <laughs> not enough. Like, I don't know. Like, I. Or maybe almost, maybe almost is my word because it feels like I almost got it, you know, but I don't feel like I got it, you know, like WWE, I was almost there. Like I was there, of course, I had a contract, but I was in NXT UK. It wasn't really WWE. So it was just an almost. And with the MMA career, you know, 
um, it was an almost thing. I, I challenged the, the number one in the heavyweight division, but she dodged it. She didn't, you know, she didn't accept it. To, she didn't accept it, the fight, so it never happened. So it was an almost thing. It's always an almost thing. And that annoys me, you know. Um, and yeah, guys like you, you know, like you say, hey, you're so wonderful. And I really appreciate it. But something is missing. And maybe I find the missing piece with the promotion because um, I'm really having fun. Um, a lot of people coming to my shows. So maybe that's the missing link. But I don't want to be an almost. I want to I wanna have the big prize. Uh, I'm getting older, you know, that sucks about being a professional wrestler or like an athlete. The age number is like, yeah it's like behind you it's always knocking on your shoulder and say hey you have to you have to move on you have to move and that, that's maybe why i cannot stop you know that's why i'm always stressed and why i want to make things done but like the nw like the new japan stuff you know yeah. when they called me i was like yeah that's like that's made huge. My sense. That's, huge. that's huge that's like so tremendous huge and normal people don't understand it and it's not about the money it's about the honor you know like the the being a becoming a legend you know and i'm a history maker i'm i wrote so much history in my career like i'm the first german here first german there first european there yeah. but it's not enough i don't know like i feel there's still something missing and i don't know i know that my fans they're really proud about me and you know like yeah, people, yeah, of course I'm yeah, proud. Well, I'm I, need too, yeah. Like, <laughs> I need something more like i have still <clears throat> big dreams you know and i want to make these big dreams happen and i hope they will come <laughs> you know jazz i see like i always tell my guests you're the first guest i've heard say that in a real cool way mm. i want more i don't know what it is but i want more and i say you're here on all the top rope it's like a buffet there's so much on the buffet table like i don't know what else to get and it, it sounds like in wrestling there's mm. like you said jazz there's so many promotions you run your own promotion and it's just like I'm getting goosebumps because you've been you, – you have your show coming up next month with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I saw mm -hmm. FTR. They're, they're on the poster. And, mm -hmm. like, when I see you, FTR, all you people, like, talented athletes, it's like, man, one day I'm going to be old and gray and saying, man, I had her on my show, and she did the, the October New Japan Pro Wrestling show. So yeah. it's like <laughs> – I, I say, man, you know, Jazz, you said the thing about it, my dear, is that, you know – you get older. I'm getting older. You know, I'll be 41 next month, and I, I, I cry when I think about it. But <laughs> <laughs> I like, feel you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it, it, it's like I've learned that with the pandemic and you know people with health issues. Is it a thing in wrestling where take it while you can because tomorrow is never guaranteed? Is that a big thing in wrestling because injuries and that must be a thing that wrestlers like yourself think about all the time because I, I, I you're doing everything you want to do, like promotion and like it, it's, but pretty much the question is like, like in wrestling, would you say do it while you can because tomorrow you never know? Well, you know, now it sounds like a cliche and I never believed it because I do not have it, but family is most important. Exactly. Like, it sounds so cliche and it sounds so annoying like for me you know like i do not have family like i have absolutely nobody <laughs> so i was always like ah shut up you know <laughs> but since the pandemic hit you know i understand and you know when you're injured like i had a really bad neck injury i had a shoulder uh, surgery just recently and then you understand you know all the all the trophies, all the championships, like at the end of the day, like, yeah, having fa fans is really amazing, but they're not there. Like yeah. at the end of the day, when you really like, if you really need someone, they're not there. Yeah. Uh, now I have like dogs and these dogs are like family to me. They're like my yeah. babies. I have them like since one year, you know, so it's not the same, of course, but I have this feeling like when I go home at the end of the day and they just laying there and sleeping next to my leg or something, I'm like, man, this is all worth it. This is why I'm doing this. Like, you know, like it sounds so crazy, but at the end of the day and imagine like, I don't know if you have kids, but I don't have kids, but I can imagine that this is the ultimate thing. You know, like if you have like a little daughter and you're like, I want to make her proud. I, for me, 
her opinion is the most important. I don't care what Dave Meltzer say or whatever, you know, like I don't care five star men. <laughs> my kid has something to eat. That's the most important thing, you know. And I realize that. Like I'm getting older, as you see. So I realize yeah. that. <laughs> you know, Jazzy, like I said, you love your doggies. I don't have any kids, but I do have my own dog and I love her too. So I'm a doggy daddy. <laughs> you know so, and, and, you know, like I said, I, I love my dog. And I'm sure your dogs know. If you're maybe a God, I don't want I don't want to see it happen. Maybe if you're injured or you're tired, they 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 know dogs feel when humans are like their humans are not well. And it's a cool thing. Mm. But it, it, I, I've learned too that the older you get for me, you know, appreciate life more. God is good. And mm. like I said, I'm glad wrestling's here. I could do mm. my podcast with so many talented wrestlers like yourself. And mm. hey, life is definitely good as good can be and mm -hmm. you know jazz you said that when you were doing wwe nxt you know uh uk mm -hmm. like you said you felt that like it wasn't wwe but i think it is wwe because you you can say like your name will always be in, in that little box of you know uk you know wwe so your name will always be in there though mm. yeah i mean you know when i go to press i always tell them i was there but still it's not the same you know like i wasn't working with i don't know roman reigns or john cena you know i wasn't in the same level room so it's not the same you know what i mean but i mean of course many people dream to be there where i was so i'm absolutely grateful that i was there and i appreciate it and i know it wasn't luck it was really hard work um, but any of the day, you know, um, yeah. it's just how I feel about it. And I hope one day maybe it change and I look back and I say, you know what? I freaking made it. <laughs> you did make an MP like, like when you did your stuff on WWE NXT UK, when they show clips of you, like you could be teaching, like I said, the next, you know, Jazzy Gabbers, you know, of tomorrow. I mean, you could tell them like, they'd be like, yo, that's you like years from now. So you're paving the way. Of course, there's only one Jazzy Gabbard. I would say there's only one, <laughs> only but one. you're 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 paving the way for the wrestlers of tomorrow with your promotion. You yeah. give other people chances, so mm -hmm. you, you're definitely right in your name and and and, and your legacy in wrestling. So, like I said, I, I'm proud of you for that, and that that's a really 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 cool thing, Jazzy. Thank you, thank you. Now, you've of course wrestled. You know, I'm sure, you know, you did some stuff in the, in the U.S. and Germany. And to pretty much flip both questions, from from what you noticed, what's the coolest thing about wrestling in Germany and the coolest thing about wrestling in the U.S.? Because they're different night and day, but they both have their things that make them sizzle. Mm -hmm. Man, like, yeah. these questions, they're good questions, but I'm not prepared for them. <laughs> <laughs> This thing, oh man, I really have to think because you know, in wrestling, there's so many cool things. Um, I mean, definitely the May Young Classic was one of the coolest things when the people were like standing up and shouting my name. Yeah. Or, <laughs> you know, I remember my first uh, match in, the, in America in the United States. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I had like a match with a girl and uh, we were brawling a little bit outside and then I whip her against the wall. And, you know, in Germany, walls are thick. You can break yeah. them. But not so in America. <laughs> I broke the wall. <laughs> so it was the dojo of these people there. And since then, they have a broken wall because of me. So I thought that's cool. The promoter didn't <laughs> thought so. He was really angry at me. But I thought it's cool. I broke a wall in America. <laughs> well, your promoter was mad at you for breaking a wall. But I'm sure he's like, dude, I just sold you tickets. And fans are going to be like, I gave them memory, you know, fan memories for you. So... Well, you yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, like frame around and say, "Hey, <laughs> that that's really that's a really cool thing." And I, I I couldn't wait to make this clip for you. And when I saw everything you're doing with this, I was like so excited. I was like, "I got to show her this." And I hope you really enjoy this clip. And I want to talk to you about this, of course. Cyrus Sports Entertainment by Jazzy Gabbard. You're doing your own thing. I love the pictures. You're in the middle there, looking badass. <laughs> And Jazzy, I love the creation of the colors, the poster. Like, if I, if I was in the area where you're promoting this set, I will come see it. But I just, I just love it. Mm -hmm. um, three questions up there. 
Mm. What, what was like? How what was the hardest thing to make this a reality? Because you just can't go out and start a wrestling promotion. Mm. Well, you can if you have the money. So True. For me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was always the money. Like my shows, they're not like normal shows. Like my my shows cost a little bit more money than usual shows. So for me, that was the hardest part. But also, um, when for example, the first like I had in my mind which um, um, venue I want, right? So I called this venue up. I said, "Hey, I want to do a wrestling show," and they instantly said no because they don't want to have wrestling. And I'm like, "Hey." Yeah listen listen like i do this and this so they say so it's more like a musical i mean yeah musical so i yeah. sell it from now on as Sold a musical it. not as a wrestling show because people in germany don't like wrestling as it seems like they have in mind wrestling is fake and so we don't like it but they don't understand what that even means you know like they're watching movies movies are not real you know so don't you like movies um so yeah that was a little bit diff difficult and I saw the second question. Um, my promotion is different because I combine different um, show elements. For example, I have motto shows. Like this show, for example, is going to be a gladiator. So everyone will be in a theme of a gladiator. And I have a live band there. I have you know, like like a theater, like a role play there. So And the fans and, of course, the, the people working there are dressed up in this gladiator thing you know and my next show for example in Basel I have also in October a show in Basel it's going to be fight club and it's going to be like a no like a casino and everyone is dressed yeah. really nice and like a suit or something and we are super sexy we have like a stripper there we have live music again there so it's every show is like a theme and it's a different theme you know so that's like my specialty and I'm since now I'm successful. So let's see how the ticket sales goes by now. But I have two shows coming up and I'm already international. I'm not just in Germany. I'm also in Switzerland. So it's it's fast rising. And I hope, of course, I can keep up because right now it's just me doing it. Like I have to call all these people and I'm like, oh, today I was. Yeah, today I was out and, and you know, hanging the posters everywhere and I'm selling the tickets by myself. Like, you know, like. I hope I have to think about everything. I have to book the flights. I have to sit there and book it. And I'm like, oh, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I hope I grow fast and yeah, that people come and join me and want to make my promotion really big. Well, you know, the fact that you promote yourself, you know, and everything yourself, storylines, you're doing everything, just you. <laughs> I, I can say that like is dedication. The first mm -hmm. thing I noticed about since you came on the show, you're very humble. And I think if you're humble, in any sport, if you're humble in general, I think good things will come to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly where you're at. I can tell that you're humble and you love wrestling. And the fact, the fact that you're doing all this on your own and that poster <laughs> I seen, I was like, man, that is so creative. And I, I think I think the fact your poster looks so creative, it will attract fans. I think when wrestling fans see a poster, I think wrestling fans like to see the vision of something like, I'm going to take mm -hmm. that show out because it's something different. It's not like your usual – Samoa Joe, you know, whatever usual poster, mm -hmm. but I had to share that with you, Jazzy, on the show because that poster, I, I love it. Like, I really yeah, do. The, the artist is amazing. Like, did you saw also the, the other poster from um, Switzerland? Yeah. You know, so cool, you know, and I, I already work on another poster because we want to do like a, I cannot say it now because someone will steal maybe my idea, but we're working on a show, <laughs> on a poster already, and I was like, dude, you're so brilliant, and I think also what makes a little bit me, but that's of course not a fan thing, but it's like an intern thing, I put money, like I take money in my hand and I spend it, I spend it on good wrestlers, I spend it on good graphics, I spend it I don't know, like, you know, to make it look professional. Of course, at the end of the day, it's a big risk, you know. Maybe nobody want to see it, but at least I tried. And that's like my thing. Like, I want to try. If I don't try, I cannot I cannot be successful. Of course, I can fail, but, you know, that's life. You need to try sometimes something. Yeah, you know, and, and, and and I, I like that theory that you said, try it, because you never know what's going to happen. And there's people, not in, just in wrestling, outside of wrestling, they, they're, they're afraid to pop that bubble and fly mm. out of there and just try something, you know, mm. and that that's, I'm, I, I really think you're on to something there and just believe in yourself. And mm. honestly, you got to keep me posted on how everything <laughs> does with this promotion, because if there's any way being here, being over here in the U S I can watch it. 
just just let me know because I want to check it out for myself too. Because... I don't know if you saw the first show. My first show was also on Fight TV. So yeah, I went... Fight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to watch it. It's still there. But I have a question. Like, um, you know, my company in Germany, I call it Sirius, and I thought it's the same in English, like Sirius, the brightest star in the universe. Yeah. But you guys pronounce it Cyrus or something. Yeah, that's a U.S. way. So if I if I if I if I botch that, yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I saw Tatanka, who's on my show. He yeah. said the same. He said Cyrus. And I was like, no, it's serious. <laughs> but I guess it's uh, the English pronunciation, but it's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, I just want to tell everybody that if you're in Germany, in the US, if you're watching off the top rope right now, I got Jazzy Gabbard on the episode. And this episode is Jazzy because she's talking about her promotion, her busy October. Like I said, if you want to ask her any questions, you got the comment box. I'll be more than happy to read it on the air here on Off the Top Rope Thursday morning. And Germany, it is nighttime over there, I'm assuming. So, fine, yeah, fine. Fine. Yeah. okay, fine. Yeah. So, but um, that's the one thing is that I'm happy to be back on the air and have the, the great Jazz Gabbard here on Off the Top Rope. Now, one thing, Jazzy, I noticed with wrestling is that. I was like, I'm sure she's the person that can answer this question for me and everybody watching the show. The whole jump from MMA to, to wrestling and you got the background in MMA. Like, what's one thing that people who want to do what you did and a lot of other ladies and guys have done, if you're an MMA fighter, what's one that you should know that before you make that jump, into wrestling that you should be aware of? Well, you know, I'm a professional wrestler since 20 years and I went to Japan. I lived there for a while and I had like a big career there. But in Japan, it's so different than in America. Like in America, there's a lot of show, you know, and they're protecting each other. But in Japan, they're freaking hard hitting. I had so many concussions. I had so many broken eardrums. Yeah. When broken, my teeth were out. So it was really tough sport over there. And then I thought, dude, they're beating me up all the time. I need to train MMA. So I went to the MMA studio and I trained all these techniques. And then I thought, why not do a fight, you know? But it was just a thought back in my head. But then my visa went, like, was off and I had to go back to Germany. And I didn't really have anything to do. WWE was still not interested in me. And that was like 2015. And then someone asked me, do you want to try MMA? And I was like, you know, I have absolutely nothing right now and let's do it. So I went to a training gym. I moved into a caravan for six weeks and I trained <laughs> Three times a day, I trained every freaking day. And it was really tough and hard training. But I have to say, still, wrestling is the hardest sport in the world. Because, <laughs> you know, when we have like a big cut or we have like a broken nose or something, or like bleeding a lot. In MMA, the fight is over, you know. Yeah. But in wrestling, it's still going on. It's still going and, on. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and... A lot of stuff, you know, I don't want to break kayfabe too much, but I guess the people are already informed, you know. So, for example, we're talking about the match in wrestling, then we have to act against our natural, how you say, will. For example, if someone goes to the top rope and yeah. says he, he is going to jump at me with a prop kick, I have to physically force myself to stay in position and not run away. I mean, my personal instinct would be run away. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> right but in wrestling you have to keep on going and you have to say okay hit me whatever so i personally think wrestling is the hardest sport in the world um with mma it was difficult for example when i went into the cage right usually you get like a focus thing you like you only look at your opponent you have to have a clear head you cannot be distracted but because of my wrestling experience i was like hey fans there hey there and all oh, like there so i was like ooh and then the first punch came it was so painful i was like what the <laughs> hell and then my my head like woo 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 and then, <laughs> and then it was really quick and then yeah i beat her haha -ha. and then hey, she was got, you got the w <laughs> she was so mad she's like you're just a fake fighter i'm like but i beat you yeah but wrestling is shit i beat you yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So there was no argument she had against me. So now what can I say about it? Like, I love pro wrestling. I don't like beating people. If I have to hit you in the face, I can, but I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> 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 and 
and that you always should remember even as a pro wrestler try also learn some mma you never know who you have to protect yourself against you know some crazy people in the ring who cannot you know follow rules or ego comes in the way yeah. it's better to know both you know but I personally love more the pro wrestling. I, you know, I, when I go to Basel, I'm in like a venue. They have MMA, they have boxing, and for now they have wrestling. So I went last Saturday there, and there was MMA. Yo, this one guy, he got kicked so hard, I thought he's dead. He was <laughs> falling down. And you know what? In pro wrestling, it's like this. Someone injures or something, and the ambulance has to come. You know, all the people are quiet, and they wait till this person maybe gets up right and if this person gets up on any we all clap and i did the same so this guy everybody thought he's dead everyone came tried to help him and then i helped him on his feet and i was like yeah he's alive and everyone is looking at me what the fuck is she doing oh sorry <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> like well in wrestling we clap because hey i'm happy he's still alive you know but not an mma i guess <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's brutal. I don't like. I don't like that. I like to entertain the people. I like to entertain the kids, you know. And MMA is absolutely nothing for kids. So yes. yeah. Well, yeah, because you see, like in wrestling, when wrestlers come out, you see so many kids running up to the railings and everything, and kids. Mm -hmm. They they look up to 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 you guys in, in the ring and kids kids yeah. they they love it. I mean, I grew up as a kid watching mm -hmm. wrestling as well. So yeah, it's it's role models. I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty much yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess I didn't answer your question. So for the people who want to try MMA or wrestling, I don't know. Oof, yeah, it's a personal thing. I mean, you know, some other wrestlers look at CM Punk, for example. I mean, it's different. He really, he went to the super top, like UFC. Like, you cannot have better fighters than that. I'm sure when he went to like a normal MMA show, like me, I went to a small MMA show, then he would have been more successful. But as a wrestler... It's different. It's like it's too difficult sport, and most MMA fighters they have a hard time to adjust to the wrestling style. It's both a respectable sport, you know. But if you do something like if you decide to be an MMA fighter, you have to do it 100%. And it's the same with wrestling. If you want to be a wrestler, treat it with respect, with discipline, and do it like 100%. But it's like in every sport, whatever you do, like even a job, like if you go to a job. Put yourself, your soul, and everything into it. That's what I also learned in Japan. You know, in Japan, it's a it's a different country than what we have in the Western world. Like, if you are if you have like a profession, like if you are a baker or like a cook or something, it's not like in the Western world that you do it because you need to make money. No, you do this job because you really love it and you really want to, for example, feed the people. That's why you are a freaking baker. You know, and yeah, and I think that's also what you do in mid wrestling. Like, I don't play to be a wrestler i am a wrestler and i think that's the big difference you know um, from the most people who are part-time wrestlers who have like a job um but uh, on the weekend they are wrestlers they play that they are a wrestler and you can see it you can see it in the ring the way they walk the talk and the promos um and that's why it's a big different different because from indie wrestling to wwe or aew you know you yeah. see there are wrestlers they're not playing and there there are these you know rick flair is rick flair you can change yeah. it you yeah. know, and that's the same with me. I am the alpha female and there's no change. Like if you if you ask me what are you, I'm a wrestler, you know. There's only one alpha female, of course. <laughs> yeah, get jazzy. Now <laughs> jazzy, this next segment, you gotta put the you gotta put your thinking cap on. And okay. you meant you mentioned AEW and this next segment of the show is about AEW. So you ready for the next segment? Of course. All right, let's roll. Damn, Damn Ty. That's good. All right. So the question will be is that I said high ticket sales all over this. This would be a good match. Yourself versus Marina Shafir, because both of you guys are badasses. The question <laughs> is, come up with your very own created gimmick match between you two ladies. Oh, my God. All right, I would say this match is a wrestling match, of course, because it's an AEW, but it's going to be MMA fighting roles, you know? You can give up, you can be knocked out, um, and I do think it has to be in a, in a cage, you know? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. thinking that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you have to have 
UFC clothes on, like fighting clothes. And, and you know, in wrestling, it's not allowed to punch in the face. But this match, absolutely, you can punch in the face, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but you got to talk to TK. And I think t uh, Tony Khan, I don't know. I would like, I, I would, that would be a good match, man. I mean, I think that'd be a good pay-per-view kind of yeah. match and like like at an all out or something so i would love the setup and everything you know you can have like a coach in the in the corner who like shouting in there and it can be like a professional like superstar fighter so we have more ticket sales you know conor mcgregor in my corner yeah. and i don't know maybe cyborg in her corner you know shouting things jazzy give her arm <laughs> you know, stuff like that yeah i think that could be that could be something well, well, your your answer to that question was pretty jazzy, and you get an eight <laughs> plus 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 super nine million plus. So that was a good answer, and I hope you enjoyed the segment. So, and like I said, I was like, man, that'd be a good match, whether it was in the ring or the MMA cage. Um, yeah, it'd be, be high ticket sales for that. So, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Now, jazzy, as we end this awesome episode of Off the Top Rope Thursday style. Now, you got a busy October coming up for your promotion. <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I want you to slam and promote, you know, the stuff you got coming up and round of applause, you know, for, you know, what you're doing. So let it go. You got, you got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, if you are in, in the UK, come to the Royal Crest show and there's, First night is sold out, but maybe second night, please come around. Um, Ava White and me, we're fighting in the first round for the title. You know, it's a big championship. It's the most important championship in female history. Um, and yeah, if you're in Switzerland, come to my show in Basel. Or if you're in Germany, come to my show on October 7th in Balingen. So yeah, I see you there. Man, like I said, you got October 1st, October 2nd. I mean, like I said, Cyrus, you know, you know, you guys got, you know, your stuff coming up and everything. And the biggest thing of all I want you to do is, is get some wins for New Japan Pro Wrestling because my birthday is October 10th. So give me kind uh -oh. of like a birthday present. But, and get but a win you know for what me. that means? If I win, like for real, if I win in the tournament on October 2nd, I have to fly to Japan in October. I'm not sure if I can do it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but well, yeah. Nah, man, take but, her I'm taking her down. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They, but that's so many great things coming up. I mean, like I said, you know, your promotion, like I said, you know, Cyrus Entertainment, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I mean, you're going to be a wrestler in the ring, promoting outside the ring. So October is going to be a good and busy month, but in a good busy way, you know, for, for Jazzy Gabbard. So like I yeah. said, that, that's going to be some cool stuff you got coming up. So. All right. And, I'm going, okay. Yeah, and the, most of all, you know, I got to ask you this this last question, Jazz. You know, from one to ten, would you ever come back on all the top rope again? Absolutely, but next time, more time for me, a better background, better makeup, and, <laughs> and victorious with the title. Some title I will hold in my hand, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know. I gotta say, the one thing that was jazzy about this episode, and you're probably saying, Ty, we're going to agree. My guest, the one, the only, she is the alpha, of course, the one, only alpha, Jazzy Gabbard, was my guest live here on the returning off the top rope. Jazzy, I want to say first and foremost, you know, God bless, stay healthy, be safe, and I'm definitely proud of you, and keep doing what you're doing. That's being the best you can be. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Thank you. This is your boy, Ty Asbury, with All the Top Rope Thursday. I want to say, everybody, thank you very much for watching this episode. And like I said, definitely cheer on Jazzy. Yeah, she's doing big things in wrestling. I'm out of here. Love yourself. God bless. We're out of here. Peace out. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Ropes Media. The Ropes Media. Uh. Tyron Asbury. Yeah. Tyron Asbury, yeah. yeah. Every chance you get to hear us who clip us, let the time on the radio. Uh, my opinion's my opinion, every time you hear me down, moving now, but on the stereo. Every podcast live, you know the feeling, this is the time for me to speak, you know the healing, I'm telling the truth, and everything I say in this moment, but my time, I guarantee, there is no more opponents who really want to feel it. Uh, every single night, we all I'm doing this now, when you're turning on the mic, live recording, it's time to be great, it's everything that we moving out with the time